In doing regression, how do you know whether your least squared regression model is a good model or not? You have two quantitative variables, you've looked at a scatter plot and looked at the relationship and it looks like a linear relationship. You calculated a correlation coefficient and you have a strong linear association between your two variables. You performed the least squared regression so you have estimates for your parameters alpha and beta. Now how do you actually decide whether yes, this model that I've got is a good model or not? The answer to that question comes down to two different components. The first is an R squared value. The R squared value just equals the square of the correlation coefficient. Remember the correlation coefficient is a measure of the strength and the direction of the linear association between the two variables. R squared is just that correlation coefficient squared. The R squared value tells you the percent of variation and the response variable that is explained by the least squared regression line model. The second thing that you must look at is a residual plot. A residual plot is just a scatter plot of the residuals versus the x data values. What do you want the residual plot to look like when you have a good linear model? You do not want to see any pattern in your residual plot. The residual plot takes precedent over an R squared value. If you have a bad residual plot, you are hoping that your R squared value is high, close to 100%. If it is a high number close to a percent, then the majority of the variation in your response variable is explained by your least squared regression model. So you're looking for a high R squared value. But again, the residual plot takes precedence. If you have a pattern in your residual plot, even though you have, an, even though you have a high R squared value, the least squared regression model that you got from your regression is not a good model. What is a residual? At a, at a particular X data value, let's say XI, the residual is the observed response the observed data response minus the fitted value at xi. So a residual is the observed data minus the fitted data. Recall, what is the fitted data? yi hat is a from your regression model plus b from your regression model evaluated at your ith data value. So let's say you have data x1, y1, x2, y2, all the way up to x, n, y, n. Your second fitted value is a plus b evaluated at your second x data. So a residual is the observed y data, y2. So the, let's say the second residual is equal to y2 minus a plus b evaluated at x2. That just equals the observed y value minus the fitted value y2. How many residuals are there? There is one residual for every data point. So there are n residuals. The residual plot is just x, the x data along the x axis and the corresponding residual along the y axis. This is your residual equals zero line. One of the properties of the residuals is that the sum of the residuals always equals zero. So if we sum from i equals one to n over all of the residuals, which is just the sum of the observed y data minus the fitted data, that will always equal zero. What does a good residual plot look like? A good residual plot is one that is a random scattering of points around the residual equals zero line. This is a good residual plot. There's no pattern amongst the residuals as the x 
date, observe data values change. It's just a random scattering. That's what you want to see in a residual plot. What do you not want to see in a residual plot? You do not want to see a pattern or a funnel shape to the graph. In our first graph, we see a pattern. The residuals are negative. They become positive, and then they become negative again. What does this particular residual plot indicate? Well, what about when the residuals are positive? Remember, a residual is the observed data minus the fitted data. If the residual is positive, your observed data is greater than your, your predicted data. So we have underestimated for positive residuals. What about for negative residuals? For negative residuals, the fitted value is greater than the observed data. So we have overestimated when our residuals are negative. So when we see this pattern, this says when the x data is, when the x data is small, we have overestimated with our model. When the x data is in the middle, we have underestimated using our model. And when x data gets large, once again, we have overestimated using our model, meaning we do not have a good model. The last residual plot where we see a funnel shape, as the x data gets larger, our residuals are getting larger. That is a bad residual plot. What this residual plot indicates is that the standard deviation of our response variable y is not constant with x. One of the assumptions of linear least squared regression is that the standard deviation of our response variable at a particular x data is constant. As x changes, the standard deviation of our response variable does not change. This funnel shape pattern says that as the x data increases, so does the standard deviation of our response variable. So this violates one of the assumptions of least squared regression. The funnel shape could go in the opposite direction. Another funnel shape would be that the residuals are large for small x data and gets very small as x gets greater. Again, the assumption that the standard deviation of a response variable is constant for all x values would be violated. So the two things you do not want to see in your residual plot is a pattern or a funnel shape to the graph. You want to see a random scattering of points. So in summary, after you've done your least squared regression, to decide whether you have a good model and one that you should use or not, you want to look at the R squared value, which tells you the percentage of variation in the response variable that is explained by your model. You want that, that quantity to be large, as close to 100% as possible. You also want a good residual plot. But remember, a good residual plot comes before a large R squared value.